This is the next video about capacitors. And now I want to tell something about the magnitude from capacitors. When you work with electronics it's very important that you have an idea, idea about uh, with which capacitor you are working. And then especially its magnitude. So I have drawn here some bars and each bar indicates a certain magnitude from a capacitor. In the first bar we'll find the one farad magnitude. I hope it's clear. This is one farad. It's a very substantial and very big value. You find for instance uh, one farad or ten farad um, capacitors in audio electronics, especially in cars, where they bypass uh, the accumulator. And when the amplifier draws a substantial current, the charge that's stored into that capacitor um, is drained very quickly to the audio amplifier. So that's one uh, application. And the one farad is a very big value. So in fact you have to uh, divide this graph, this bar, in, um, well I don't know it exactly how many uh, points in between, but I found that the 10,000 uh, microfarad capacitor is here. So there's a big difference between uh, a 10,000 microfarad capacitor that is already a very big one to one farad capacitor. The second uh, magnitude is 1000 microfarad. This magnitude uh, is often used for instance in power supplies supplies to uh, smoothen out the, the uh, rectified AC voltage. That's often 1000 microfarad or 5000 microfarad. That's a very uh, well known use of this magnitude. This is another magnitude, 1 microfarad. And now we go to the lower value ranges. For instance 0 0.5 microfarad or 500 nanofarad. And here we find 100 nanofarad. This is a very popular capacitor, 100 nanofarad. Or in other words 0 0.1 microfarad. Um, now we go to another magnitude, 10 nanofarad, 1 nanofarad, and uh, capacitors within this range are also very popular, and especially uh, for instance in audio filters, sometimes op amp circuits. Um, and also one thing to uh, be aware of in between, um, that the size doesn't indicate the value. This is for instance a, a 1.8 picofarad capacitor and this is a 100 picofarad capacitor. So this capacitor is 100 times bigger but its size is not very, uh, this doesn't differ very much. You get a little bit an indication um, uh, about the, uh, there is a certain relation between the size and the capacitor value when we go to the microfarad range. These are also both these capacitors are both in the microfarad range, and they are often uh, quite big. Though also here, uh, there's not it's it it can be it's not always clear. For instance. Um, this capacitor is uh, 10,000 microfarad and this is, let's say, approximately 1,000. So this capacitor is in value 1,000 times bigger than this capacitor, though its size is smaller. The size has something to do with the voltage, the working voltage from the capacitor. When a capacitor is big, its working voltage is often high. But we were talking about the 
this magnitude, the one nanofarad magnitude. Um, I will tell more about this in the, in the next video. These are the low, uh, low value magnitudes, 100 picofarad and 10 picofarad. You will find these kinds of capacitors uh, much in radio circuits. Uh, especially in the high frequency parts from radio, station, uh, radio circuits where the uh, antenna signal has to be amplified for instance they are often used as coupling capacitor for instance and also as decoupling capacitor to decouple each uh, high frequency stage separately from the power supply um, or oscillators, you will also find uh, capacitors in this range, for instance up to shortwave, uh, 30 megahertz. So this is the magnitude, these capacitors are usable in radio circuits uh, in the magnitude from um, let's say 1 megahertz uh, up to 300 megahertz. And when you look at the magnitudes, it will also be clear that it makes no sense to do experiments um, by changing a capacitor from a totally different magnitude. Uh, this is what I mean when you, for instance, have a power supply and that power supply has a capacitor, a um, supply capacitor from uh, 1000 microfarad to smoothen out the, um, the DC filter capacitor in that case it makes no sense to replace such a capacitor by a capacitor that ha is 4 or 5 magnitudes lower let's say 10 nanofarad um, the smoothening effect for instance in a power supply uh, is totally gone when you lose when you use sorry when you use such a small capacitor and it's totally nonsense to replace a power supply capacitor by a capacitor in this magnitude range. It's nonsense. It won't work at all. But when you for instance uh, have a power supply and um, find a little bit hum and you try to make the, the, the filter capacitor bigger you can try within this magnitude um, to change that filter capacitor. So for instance use this one. You make it um, let's say 10,000, 10 times bigger and the effect that you have, um, the smoothening out of the uh, ripple on the power supply line is much better. Okay, I also did some calculations I, uh, that I found um, in the book that I read, read about this issue. Um, I have to say that I could not believe what I saw when I made these calculations, but uh, I encourage everyone to uh, do the same calculations and take conclusions. This is the formula in the book. Uh, about how to calculate a capacitor. So in my mind I thought let we make a capacitor from 10 by 10 meters, a copper plate, one millimeter in between, air is dielectricum, and what uh, could be the value from such a capacitor. When I did my calculations well, these are the uh, factors in the formula, this is the formula I found that such a capacitor had a capacitance value from 79 picofarads. So, in fact, this big capacitor is equivalent to, let's say, approximately this small ceramic capacitor. Because of the fact that the dielectric material inside this capacitor is totally another substance, it's no air, it's other, uh, another material, this capacitor is made very small. But when we uh, go further, 
with, with this uh, comparison, I found that to make a capacitor from 870 nanofarad, let's say this is approximately a capacitor like this, you need uh, two copper plates and 10 meter wide and they have to be 100 meters long. And when we go on to make a capacitor from 8.7 microfarad, this is not far from this capacitor, we, we need two copper plates 10 meters wide and 1000 meters long. When we go on, 70 microfarad, this band of copper, of two bands of copper with air in between, have to be 10 kilometers long. 870 microfarad, two copper plates uh, from together 100 kilometers long. Uh, 8700 microfarad, two copper plates uh, with a length of 100 kilometers. So this is approximately the value from this capacitor. This has this capacitor has. Uh, a value that is equivalent to two copper plates uh, with air in between, one millimeter uh, in between, from 1000 kilometers long and 10 meter wide. So it's a little bit unbelievable, but I think the formula is correct. Here, some other calculations. I encourage everybody to uh, do. To recalculate it, I think uh, the formula was correct. Okay, what I try to point out is that the magnitude from the capacitor's value is very important. When you do experiments, stay within the magnitude, and then you will find. Uh, uh, the effects perhaps that you wanted and when you go to another magnitude you can expect a very uh, different electronic effects. For instance when you use a, a, a coupling capacitor, when you take a coupling capacitor from 10 picofarad, um, the stages, the two transistor stages couple in a certain sense, a certain amount of energy is transported, but when you uh, replace this 100 picofarad capacitor by 100 nanofarad capacitor. The coupling effect is very, very much, um, uh, is much bigger, very substantially, and perhaps you can even get distortion or so.